November. It is the second last month of the year, which is crazy to think about. 2020 has been a year that has been ridiculously slow and painful and yet here we are and we're almost at the end and it doesn't seem real. So today I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you what is happening in our budget for November. But before we jump in and have a look at our numbers for the month, let me just introduce myself real quick. My name is Nikki. I'm a mum to three and I love sharing all of the tips and tricks that have helped our family budget better, demolish all of our debt, skyrocket our savings and still have heaps of frugal fun along the way. So if you are new around here our story in a nutshell we're a pretty average Aussie family and about five years ago we found ourselves in a pretty average situation with our finances we were $73,000 in debt and honestly thought that was pretty normal we found the debt-free community we found people like Dave Ramsey and Scott Pape Jordan Page and my personal money mentor Danny J and basically we turned our financial situation around we went from being your average consumer driven family to paying all of that debt off $73,000 worth of debt in just 22 months and all on a combined family income of just $77,000 a year. Then we went on to save up our emergency fund and then we went and had a little bit of fun. We took a couple of months off and traveled around Australia with our family in our camper trailer and our beloved 4x4 Larry the Land Cruiser. And now we are working on a really big goal of saving up to pay for a house outright 100% with cash. So as you can imagine, the main focus of our budget is saving as much as we possibly can. And 2020 has actually been a pretty good year for us because we have been able to cut just about anything and everything that is non-essential out of our budget and squeeze out as many dollars as we possibly can into our house savings fund. So that is what is happening again in our budget for November. We are going bare bones. So there isn't a lot of extra spending happening. It kind of makes these videos a little bit boring because there isn't a lot really going on in our budget for me to talk to you about. But you guys can see that basically what we're doing is cutting back all of our non-essential spending so that we can funnel our money to the things that are really important to us. All right, well, that's enough talking. Let's jump in and have a look at our actual numbers for November. All right, well, we have just wrapped up our budget meeting date night and locked in the figures for our November budget. One of the things that is a little bit different this month for us is we know that we need to fix the gearbox in our four wheel drive and we've got a quote. It's going to cost somewhere around $3,000 to do that. So our main goal has now shifted. We are still uh, saving towards our house and what I really want to do is try and hit $60,000 in our house fund because I like round figures. But our main goal this month is going to be saving up so that we can do a refurb on the gearbox in the four wheel drive. So let's jump over and have a look at what we are actually going to uh, do with our cash this month or our money I should say this month uh, this is our monthly spending plan what I like to do is sit down and project for the month ahead making sure that we leave a little bit of wiggle room in our budget for things that may not be planned for or budgeted for so one of the ways that we do that is we have a miscellaneous spending line and we have our buffer. I like to keep the buffer at $100 and try not to spend it. But if I do spend it, basically what I do is I just top it up again the next month. So we are topping up the buffer. I need to put $50 back into there. And then we have miscellaneous spending for anything that I have forgotten to budget for. I do try my best to budget for everything that I know is gonna come up. But you know what, sometimes things happen that isn't in one of our sinking fund categories or in one of our savings accounts or cash envelopes. It's just a random expense that we weren't expecting. But this way I've got our miscellaneous spending and our buffer for those 
unexpected, unallocated expenses that come up. And this has been one of the things that has definitely saved our budget. It's kept it on track and left a little bit of slack in the line so that our budget isn't so tight that when something comes up that's unexpected, we have to start dipping into either our emergency fund or back in the day, we were just spending it without any regard as to where it was actually going to come from out of our budget or the impacts that it was going to have. So uh, the miscellaneous spending and the buffer has saved us on multiple occasions. This month we do have a couple of extra things uh, out of the ordinary coming up that are new in our budget or are a month specific expense that uh, isn't going to come out month to month. So the first one is now that restrictions are starting to ease up a little bit here in Victoria, we have the opportunity to do some music lessons for Charlotte. She's going to start doing some drumming lessons. That is going to be $15 a week, but I'm not sure how that's going to be billed for the term. So I've put $100 aside and that should get us close. If I need to pay for the full term up front, then I know that I can pull a little bit extra out of our miscellaneous spending or our buffer and I'll be able to cover the cost of that for term four for Charlotte. But this will now be an ongoing expense in our budget and we will always put a little bit aside for activities now that we can start doing activities again. The next one is Reading Eggs, which is a, a program that we're going to use for school. Uh, so that's a one-off expense. A yearly subscription is $95. So that's just going to be a one-off expense. And then that'll start showing up in our bills due in November if we continue on with that. But I'm not going to budget for that monthly. I'm not going to try and break that down and put a little bit aside. Because for me, anything that I can cash flow in our budget, I would rather just cash flow. So if it's under $100, I can usually cash flow that in a month rather than breaking that up into what would essentially be, um, you know, like $7 a week, uh, sorry, $7 a month or something like that, putting that aside every month uh, just makes then the rest of the budgeting too tedious. So that's kind of how we draw the line there. The other thing that is a one-off expense for us is a new DJ mixer for Shan. We decided that we had the funds to be able to do that this month. Uh, so we will be using some of the cash that is in his DJ savings account. We'll be using that cash, plus we'll be putting in some extra as well. So they are our three different expenses this month. And that's pretty much it in the budgeting department. What I need to do now is go ahead, pull out the cash for our cash envelopes. They are the amounts that are in green. Everything else is going to be an online transfer. And that is the end of the budget for November. Everything else that is left, what I'm going to do is first of all, try to put enough in our house savings fund so that it is up over $60,000. And then everything else, if there is anything else left, is going to go towards saving up to refurb the gearbox for the four wheel drive. So let's jump in, stuff these cash envelopes, and then finish off the budget. Alright, this is my cash envelope wallet that I have been using for about two years now. Uh, this is just a planner that I picked up from Kmart and I've just made the envelope inserts myself um, just out of some basic cardstock and bits and pieces that you can pick. It was all picked up from Kmart. If you'd like to see how I made these, I'll actually link that up above. I have a video on how I made the first lot of cash envelopes and they tend to hold up pretty well, uh, but they do need to be replaced every, I don't know, six to 12 months, somewhere in there, depending on how much you use your cash envelopes and how pretty you like them to look. I don't mind if they look a bit beat up like these ones do. So let's jump in and stuff today's envelopes or November's envelopes. There are going to be a couple that we're not going to worry about this month. So we will be doing groceries, fuel, splash cash, miscellaneous. Uh, we're not going to worry about family fun. 
we're not going to worry about date night we'll put a little bit in our personal care envelope alcohol clothing and eating out is also not on the budget this month so i'm going to put these guys aside because we don't need them and we are going to get started with our grocery allocation now i do have a little bit left over and what i do is sometimes i will leave the excess in there and then that is some extra money that i have to buy things that are marked down or on special at the supermarket that isn't part of my um, allocation for that week but it's putting us in front so if I see a bunch of marked down meat um, and I've got extra cash I can use that extra cash to buy that stuff the other thing that I do and you know particularly in this instance because I know that in November I want to do a big pantry challenge I'm actually going to put all of this money aside and this is going to go back into the bank and I'm going to just put that towards our savings from last month so I'm not actually going to hold on to our excess cash this month sometimes I do and then sometimes I use that as a way to boost our savings so for November we've decided that what we want to do is shelf timber in November I'm going to do a massive pantry challenge and use up all of the things that we have on hand it's going to help me clear out the fridge freezer and pantry and have some room for Christmas and New Year's where we tend to have a little bit of extra food on hand uh, lots of entertaining and stuff like that so having extra room in the fridge freezer in the pantry is definitely a good thing heading into December so in November we're going to do a use it up month so i'm going to allocate 400 dollars for our groceries this month but what i would like to do is try to spend 50 dollars a week and use up all of the things that we have so there's a little heads up about what might be happening on my channel in november uh, but we're going to see how we go so last month um, I allocated $500 and I was left with about $90 odd dollars um, in the end. This month I've allocated $400 and if I spend the $400 so be it. But if I can save more than that by using up the things that I already have then I will and I will put that extra money across into savings as well. So that's our grocery allocation for this month, $400. Uh, but we're going to see how much we can save at the end of that and you guys may have noticed I just pulled out a whole heap of receipts which I try to do before I do the videos but I forgot um, so I use the cash envelopes to store all of my receipts as well so I can track where our money has been going and what we've been spending on if I want to look back and do a bit of an analysis that's something that I've started doing in the last couple of months I never used to do it but I'm actually finding it really handy and having an envelope that's big enough to put those in definitely uh, makes a difference. All right, clothing. $50. Now, we did just do a big spend on clothes. We went and got a whole bunch of new clothes. Um, so the clothing envelope is looking a little bit light on these days. Uh, but we won't need to get any more clothes for a while. So $50 into there. I'm going to let that build up again. And then when we need some more clothes or shoes, we will have the funds to do that. The, one of the things with this envelope is for the most part, I don't keep this in with my cash envelopes. I keep this in our safe because I don't need to be tempted by this money when I'm out and about. If I don't have this on me, then I can't buy anything unless I was intending to buy those things, in which case I would take the envelope. So there you go <laughs> miscellaneous this month I'm going to put $50 in cash and I'm going to leave $50 in our account for miscellaneous so I like to split it this way I have a cash allowance on me but I also have um, some money on our ATM card in case I need to do some online payments or um, wherever we're going isn't accepting cash but I'm going to split it. I've got $50 cash in here, $50 in 
uh, our ATM card. All right, personal care is changing a little bit. So I'm only going to put $50 aside into there. I was putting 100, but um, I am changing how often I'm getting my hair done and what we're doing. So that's not costing as much. And um, that's really been the big change. So we're reining that back in a little bit. Our personal care covers all sorts of personal care stuff. Uh, so it does include things like haircuts, um, uh, shampoo, conditioner. If I'm going to do a big bulk buy of those sorts of things, that will come out of personal care. If I'm getting little bits and pieces, like a stick of deodorant, it's probably going to come out of our groceries. Uh, but the big expenses come out of our personal care account. So things like uh, makeup, getting nails done, hair care, hair products, uh, hair cuts and things like that would all come out of personal care as opposed to a different allocation. Uh, to be totally honest with you guys, I don't really wear makeup. Um, I don't really get my nails done. Uh, so these days this really is pretty much just for hair care, hair cuts and buying bulk lots of things like uh, shampoo, conditioner and things like that. Our fuel allocation is $150. And I still have a little bit left over from last month. Uh, we weren't running the four wheel drive around because of that gearbox issue. So we've actually saved some cash by only running one car and also making sure that when we are uh, out and about in the car, we are making the most of it so trying to run errands together and limit the amount that we are in the car and out and about so again I have some excess cash sometimes I leave it in there particularly if I know that we're going to be doing something where I'm going to need extra cash if we've got a trip coming up down to Melbourne or we're going to go four-wheel driving or something that's going to require um, excess fuel other than what we normally use but in November I don't think that's going to happen. So that is going to go into my extra savings pile as well. And we've got a new $150 for our fuel allocation for our two cars. Uh, and if you guys are wondering, we do live rurally. So we, we live out of town. It is a half an hour commute into the, our nearest town. So our fuel bill, fuel bill is a little bit high. Uh, because we do live rurally and out of town. All right, our last allocation for our cash envelopes is our splash cash. This is our personal spending money. This is for us to do whatever we want with. We get $50 each. Shan's $50 just goes straight into his wallet and I keep mine in this envelope because I tend to have all of the envelopes with me. Shan just has his splash cash for the most part, uh, unless he's specifically gonna go out and do something, in which case we'll take uh, money from whatever envelope it is that we need and he'll take that with him. So, splash cash is for us to spend on whatever we want. Um, it is our personal spending money, uh, some people call it blow money, splurge, whatever, that's what it is. And part of the reason why we haven't stressed too much about doing things like eating out or alcohol um, is because if we want to do any of these things, then we do have funds available in our splash cash, our personal spending money. Uh, if we wanted to say go and get a coffee, um, we have some funds to do that. Ooh, whoops, knocking things over here getting very excited about going out for coffee with my splash cash obviously um, so we're not specifically budgeting for those things at the moment um, but we're also not really doing those things very much at the moment either ordinarily if we were definitely going to say have a regular uh, coffee date then we would allocate money to our eating out envelope and then we don't have to worry about somebody feeling like they're the person who always pays for the coffee and the other person is spending their money on themselves or whatever. But at the moment, this system is working fairly well for us uh, where we're just using our splash cash and we will see how that goes. It's definitely saving us 
a little bit of money by not having things like eating out and alcohol and those sorts of things in our budget at the moment. But as things start to open up, as we're able to get out and about a little bit more, uh, going on excursions and doing things, uh, then we will probably start funding our family fun and our eating out allocations again so that uh, we can do those activities and they're funded specifically in our budget rather than coming out of our personal spending money. But that's not happening just yet. At the moment, we're sticking with our $50 splash cash. Definitely encourages us not to just go and blow money and waste it because it is a small amount. It does mean that we are intentional with our spending and what we're doing and uh, we're making the most of it. And it's definitely helping us to save quite a bit as well. So that is all of our envelopes for the month of November. Like I said, it's a pretty boring budget. There isn't really a lot going on, particularly not in the cash envelopes. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see how much of that $400 we can save for November by doing our massive pantry challenge, um, budget eating challenge, and using up all the things that we have and then trying to just buy very minimally uh, so that we've got lots of free room in the freezer and the pantry and whatnot for December. But that's it. All right, well, there you have it. That is our budget and our cash envelopes for November. Don't forget, if you did enjoy today's video, if you like cash stuffing envelope videos and budget videos and all that sort of jazz, and you enjoyed this one, maybe think about giving it a thumbs up. It really does help me know the kind of content you guys are enjoying and what you would like to see more of. So if you like this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, then maybe think about hitting that subscribe button down below. It's down there somewhere. It's the best way to be notified when my new videos come out. And I do have heaps of new content for you guys in the works coming your way. So that little subscribe button down below. All right, well, that is enough talking from me today. I still have a couple of jobs that I need to do with my budget, paying the bills, transferring money into sinking funds and all of that fun stuff. So I'm going to go and do that. Hope you guys have a great week ahead and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.